thing. When I solve real problems, I have everything at my disposal. Um, why does it work out to be this? Well, it's um, what we call Euler's formula. You've seen it. You've seen it? You didn't, you took 205. Do you see it in 205, this thing? Okay, so um, when I have a complex root, or when I have a complex number, any complex number can be expressed as r e to the i theta. And Euler's formula directly connects that to a complex number. So every, even if you have a function of a complex number, it should still be of the form a plus b i. And so this takes the complex number and then reduces it to a plus b i. And by the way, this is just polar coordinates. If you think of the complex plane as being one of the boards, the uh, x-axis is the imaginary and the y-axis is the real part. You can do it the other way around, it doesn't matter. Um, you're really looking at points on the complex plane as being on a circle. And that's um, e to the i theta is cosine theta, i sine theta, the x portion is cosine theta, the y portion is sine theta. So it, you're just on different circles. If I put a radius in front of it, I just multiply it by r. So this connection makes math on the complex plane really easy. Well, somewhat easy. Maybe I'll back off on that. You get some really cool transformations on the complex plane, actually. Um, you can take the plane and twist it into a Mobius strip. And I figured out how to do that transformation. We used to all be connected to these sun workstations where everybody's interconnected. So I could actually tell it to take the screen, which is a plane, the complex plane, and then transform it to a Mobius strip. So you can see someone's dissertation turning into this Mobius strip. That's what you do with extra knowledge. <laughs> so you can prove this by expanding the Taylor series for each term. E to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x uh, divided by 2 factorial, x cubed divided by 3 factorial. If something's in my head and I memorized it like that, that must be important because I've seen it again. Cosine theta is all the even terms of the um, ser series is an even function. Sine theta is an odd function. You have 1 minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. You sum it all up with, into this, and you show that they're actually all equal. I gave this to a beginning differential equations class at Georgia Tech to prove when I was a nutty 25-year-old. I'm not going to do that to you guys, but you can prove it this way using Taylor series. The solution's still actually of the form lambda 1, lambda 2t. It's still of that form. Because if I substitute a plus bi and a minus bi into the lambdas, I get something like this. And if I expand the second part into its trig functions, I get that, which is really starting to look a lot like what you have in front of you. Likewise, a to the minus t, bt, it's going to come out the same way for the complex conjugate. And then you're going to get use even and odd functions and the minus signs disappear and you can combine things and you're going to get something that looks a little bit more like that. And you can drop the I because of something called superpositioning, which we've kind of talked about, but I didn't label it as that, that if you have two independent solutions that when you plug them back into the differential equation there, the sum is going to be a solution or that Taking a derivative is a linear operator, which you could, you, it's a linear transformation actually of functions, which you may talk about in linear algebra. So that's why it all works into this cosine sine thing. In electrical engineering classes, we talk a lot about getting an eigenvalue, having an eigenvalue that's really close to being a trig, like a complex eigenvalue. If there's any error in your calculations or any error in your approximations, it could take something that is supposed to have comp, like a nice dose response type curve and end up oscillating when you don't want it to. Remember I told you about the Geeks problem that they had where they, the pixel was oscillating? That's where you get those things happening. So matching it up, like those guys are brilliant, but they didn't remember all the stuff they were doing with eigenvalues. That's where the error came from is that you actually had an oscillatory thing happening. All right. Do you have any questions? You have five more minutes. You can use the time to finish up your in-class assignments and be done with it if you want to finish it. 